You got something on your chin, Swag. You got to clean that what up. What I got? I don't know. I got that. That's Edge, man. <laughs> <laughs> Great Cup Championship at Taylor Field in Regina. I could not be more excited to be joined by members of the 1995 champion Baltimore Stallions. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We want to take a look back at this iconic Grey Cup. As fans know, this is the only Grey Cup ever won by an American expansion team. It's a piece of history, and we just couldn't be more delighted to get this this together. So welcome. Let's take a look back. And here they are against the Baltimore Stallions as the 1995 Grey Cup game at Taylor Field gets underway. Hey, um, I was just looking into the crowd. Do you guys remember coming on the field and seeing all those American flags upside down? You guys remember that? (laughs) I felt like it was a war. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I never even thought about this being like U.S. versus Canada or anything. You know what, Char? With that, with that point, because I, I get asked this by um, uh, reporters all the time. Did we feel like it was um, us against Canada or anything like that? And I always told them, I we our team never felt that right. we were. It was United States against Canada or anything like that. It was, we, we always felt us as a part of the CFL. And yeah. it was, you know, uh, a Grey Cup, and we were playing for, for the Grey, Grey Cup um, victory. Not um, – this wasn't the Olympics. This wasn't U.S. against Canada or anything like that. We never thought that. Do you guys remember the Edmonton fans rooting for us? Yeah. Yeah. They had a whole section. Could. They said, anybody that plays against Calgary, we're going to root for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A very focused Doug Flutie in preparing for this game. Here he is directing the attack for the Calgary Stampeders. And he is- you know, they had beaten us when we were hurt earlier in the season. They had beaten us bad. And I remember thinking that these guys think they're going to play against the same people that they beat in, in Calgary. And, and we, were, we were ready for them. Mike, bring, you remember we was watching the film? And um, you were saying, God, dog, you know, we played like hoodoo that game. We played really bad. <laughs> yeah. And really, we was coming off the 10-game road trip yeah. from yeah. Birmingham, Edmonton, Calgary, three games in 10 days, and everybody was banged up. And we watched the film, and we could not believe how, how bad, bad we, we how played. How poorly we played, yeah. Yeah, and, how poorly we played. Yeah, I, and I, I don't know if they were expecting that – Baltimore Stallion team to step out on the field, but uh, you know that that wasn't happening. You know, um, you know, and after that three uh, game uh, road trip that we had, where we lost two in a row, um, after after that, you know, it was it was a completely different team. He'll be kicking with the wind at his back, pressure coming up the middle. He is trying to angle it to the sidelines, and Chris Wright will field it at the 28. He breaks the first tackle, and Chris Wright, who has the ability to go all the way, could take it to the end zone. Look at this play right here. This, this is what set us off. I tell you that right now. This is, this is what set the, set the tone right here. This is when they knew it was a different team facing them. The Stampeders against the run this year have given up a meager 55 yards per game. This ball is live. This is a live ball picked up by the Stampeders' Will Johnson, and he's going to go the distance. Or will he? No, he stopped at the two. Uh-oh. 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 That ain't good. <laughs> I don't know that that <laughs> nah, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, it was just one of them calls that, you know, you, you work on all week and you you don't know if it's going to work, you're halfway, and then we made the call, and then nothing went right on that call. First and goal, there's the fake by Flutie. Flutie throws into the corner of the end zone. Marvin Pope, the touchdown! At this point, they, I, I remember they jumped ahead, and, and I got a little bit of a nervous feeling saying, come on now, we got, you know, we, we got a t- second quarter, and, no, you know, even though we've been beating them on the field, they're ahead, and uh, uh, it was 
it, you know, this, this is when we really turn it on. As focused an individual and an athlete as I have seen getting ready for a championship game. Oh, this punt is blocked. Coming off the corner, it is Brigance who got to it. The ball is loose. It's taken into the end zone. Touchdown for Alvin Walton. I, I have never been on a team that took their, their uh, the special teams as, you know, everybody takes their, their, their teams uh, serious. But, I mean, the pride that we had with all of the different, um, you know, special teams, I mean, we were dominant. Uh, punt, punt return, kickoff, right. kickoff return. Just dominant. Moody moves in behind center. Jamie Crysdale fakes inside and then under pressure from Peyton has to dump the ball before he wanted to. So this is the play that Swipe was trying to take his head off. You know, he ducked at the right time. <laughs> and Swipe, he was the goal for it. Don't duck. I said don't duck. He was seeing ghosts after that. And this could be a Grey Cup record. A 53-yard field goal attempt by Carlos Huerta. He certainly has the leg for it, Grit. It's good. And Carlos Huerta etches his name into the Grey Cup record book. Yeah. So going into the halftime, we 23-13. We felt real comfortable. Then they came out and scored on the, with the win, going against the win, which is now we felt like we had to really sell in and put a drive together. Second and nine. Tracy Ham looking, can't find anybody, trying to escape, and he does. And this is when Ham is dangerous. He'll run it in for the touchdown. So, Mike, if you, if you look at it, they put Finley on you on this play, right? And then yeah. Alondra came and just, he looped. If you watch Alondra Johnson, the fifth one, when he looped from that spot all the way over, then I realized that they had switched the coverage and put the coverage on with the linebacker Finley going to check Mike. And then, so that ended up, when Alondra came all the way over, yeah. then I knew when nobody else was out the side, if I could just get out. He ran with him, and so once I got out, there was nobody there because the linebacker had filled the void of gap. Uh, so I thought the old line did a heck of a job on that whole series. Just really maintaining um, the, uh, the pocket. You know, you can look downfield, throw the ball. I had all day to throw. Um, you just, no pressure at all on this series. Well, when you've got a guy in the backfield that does the things that this man, Mike Pringle, is capable of doing, why try to fight it? Give it to him. Let that big offensive line work up front. This guy picks you up six or seven yards every time he touches the ball. Just the way, Mike, the way you ran, I, I honest to God, I love blocking for you. I absolutely love blocking for you. Now, now, Mike, I'm not sure. Run that back. I'm not sure why you failed there. That, uh, was it on the paint? Run that back. Because that paint uh, we run. was slick. Yep. Because yep. we had really liked the matchup with Pringle against Finley. <laughs> it wasn't uh, on the paint, big Mike. That wasn't on the paint. I just <laughs> went down. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Who knows? This will be a 22-yard field goal try. He has been good on three. Previously, this one is blocked. We got, we got to see who the culprit was here getting that kick blocked. There's the Kobe, like, there's the Kobe got his hand on it. But the light came over <laughs> you, Sean. <Yeah. laughs> no, because I'm, I'm on the other side. <laughs> that's where that's where it came from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> right over you, big fella. <laughs> I, I was on the other side. That's near the fort. I'm telling you. The Stallions on a first down play. The gift to Pringle. Pringle gets away from McClanahan. Managed to stay in bounds. Look at that. Punish him, big man. This one we thought we were gonna take over the game, right? Really, this is the game part of the game that we like because we can run Mike. We can you know give him different looks. Um, really just make them play defense now. Um, 42 yards up. It's up. It's good. Against the win, Carlos Huerta makes it a 14-point game. Baltimore leading with 7.31 remaining. We pressure. We pressured Doug the entire game. Booty operates out of the shotgun. Foodie is looking deep down the sidelines, and it's intercepted by Charles Anthony. That was our mission. We were supposed to push the pocket, condense the pocket, and try and hit the quarterback, and we made him throw frantic balls to his receivers, and we had great corners to help us out, too. You know, as we're away, somebody's moving into our home while we're gone. 
Flutie's third down pass at the line of scrimmage is deflected by Alfred Payton. Once again, Swag getting his hands up. Um, I just the pressure. He was in his face the so entire game. It was crazy. Yeah, that would be Swag. <laughs> Let me show you what I'm doing. That's Swag right there. Who, who says Swag wasn't the best in the league? Look at the pressure here. That's good pressure there. That D-line, I'm telling you what, our D-line was off the chart this game. 2.19 remaining. This time the handoff to Pringle. He breaks the tackle, and Pringle has some open field. Coleman trying to bring him down and succeeds, but not before Pringle gets inside the 20-yard line. So when you look at this play and look at the significance of it, Will Johnson and Alonzo Johnson were the top two defensive players on their team, and Mike ran through both of them. Um, at a critical moment because they really need, there's a lot of time left. So Mike breaking that run really just broke him down. A big blow to the Calgary defense. 127 rushing yards for the CFL rushing leader and most outstanding player. What Mike did for us, he just set the table for what we could do on offense. I mean, we really could do a lot of different things. And as a play caller, you really just had to make sure that you use every tool in your toolbox and and being on this team i just try to use every tool in the toolbox to its fullest but in the end you get the ball to playmakers and mike was our playmaker well don matthews uh, got doused by his teammates not unexpectedly <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's dousing <laughs> me, me and uh with you. <laughs> yes. this has been a very satisfying season for the baltimore stallions their 13th consecutive win. They finished the year with 10 regular season wins, two postseason playoff wins, and now this Grey Cup triumph, and they celebrate as Grey Cup champions of 1995 and one of the happiest of all, Jim Spiros, the owner of the football team. I'll tell you what, that was a great feeling because I had in my career up until then uh, in college, I, I had made it to the final championship game every year of my life and then even the year before, and always come up short. And I personally had played poorly in all those games. And f this was vindication for me because, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was almost like a, a crusade for me. And it was probably the greatest um, athletic moment of my life. And the one thing that, that we haven't uh, really focused on is I have never had more fun in athletics than I did with that team because coach let us do what we wanted to do. Coach let us have fun. Coach let us, I mean, you guys remember me running through the defensive uh, meeting room naked, streaking, with, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, did. Yeah, you did. I want to say this. Don Matthews, the coaching staff, the players, they're the reason we're here. They're the champions. We're number one. Great Cup first time ever. But when you look at us, man, what a football team that was. What I mean, it was a two-year stint, but what a football team that was put together. Um, the different characters, the different uh, talent levels, the different uh, people that had to come together to perform at a high level in a short period of time. And, you know, when you put that team, when, when Spiros put the team together, I mean, nobody knew where it was going to end up at because we were new to the league. But to watch this team unfold and be a part of this team, for me, um, that's the best memories I have of the CFL as being a part of the Stallions. For me, being a part of, uh, of Sacramento, when we came into the league and it was just us, um, and then going to Baltimore, seeing the difference, the, and the major difference was that, you know, we had coaches uh, that had experience. We also had uh, players with, with CFL experience as well, as opposed to, you know, no experience at all. We had a lot of, you know, good, really good players, but, um, you know, they did a really uh, outstanding job putting uh, Baltimore Stallions together. You know, the um, the management, the coaches, and, you know, and the players, you know, with the experience, the veterans, and, and you know, they did a, they did such a good job that they made the um, Baltimore Ravens come back. But hey, this is sweet. This is sweet. Anywhere on this bottom row, you can put our name. It don't make a difference, you know. It's great to be here. It's great, you know, just thank the Lord for keeping us and protecting us. You know, we got the victory. We beat the best. You know, it was the best against the best. And we beat the best, so that makes us undoubtedly the best team in the CFL. You guys remember after the game 
how empty the streets were, like they just vacated. <laughs> it, was like, it was like quarantine. It, it was like, it was like, um, you know, everybody went in the house and nobody was out. I didn't nobody want to celebrate. No, it was it just was, us. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it, it was good was though, because that, that, that entire that entire week we had fun, boy. I, I I don't remember all of it, but I know I mean, majority of it. <laughs> I know majority of it was good. Regina did as well there. Second time lucky for the Baltimore Stallions. They suffered a dramatic last second loss to the BC Lions a year ago. 22 of the Stallions, including Gerald Bayless, played in that game. So for them, this Grey Cup victory at Taylor Field means that much more. Well, guys, this game and this team really is something of, of CFL lore. Like I said at the beginning, the only American team to be on the Grey Cup, and it has been my fascination for a long time. So it's an absolute honor to take this walk down memory lane with you, some all-time greats in the league. Gentlemen, thanks for your time and for your memory. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.